in this video, I'm going to show you how I'm making 100 euros per month in dividends, completely passive income, just by investing in the stock market. I'm going to show you what are those companies, how much money I've invested inside them. And in the end, I will give you five other companies, which you can also take a look at and see if you would like to invest in them or not. What many people don't know is that companies not always pay dividends quarterly. If you take a look at the German companies like Allianz and Siemens and other companies, they are going to pay you dividends yearly. Then you have American companies which are generally paying you dividends quarterly. And then you have some American companies again and some Canadian companies which are giving you dividends monthly. Monthly dividends actually give you a nice psychological feeling that yes, you're getting money every single month from this particular company that you have invested inside. And then you can rely on that kind of like, you know, stable income. Now, again, when you're investing in the stock market, of course, there are always risks. There's always a risk that your money goes down to zero, but that hasn't happened historically. So like anybody that has this massive fear that, okay, I don't want to invest in the stock market. A good practice for that is by investing small amount. And when you see that the money is actually not going down, it's just like generally increasing or it's giving you some kind of dividends back so that it has some kind of cash flow effect. You put the money somewhere. Instead of the money decreasing in value, you're actually getting the money paid out to you. That's pretty nice. Now let me take you to the screen and show you the scalable capital portfolio and how exactly are these two companies doing. So if I show you the first one, this is Main Street Capital. And the thing about like monthly dividend companies is generally they do not tend to perform that well over let's say shorter durations, you know, like maybe there could be some kind of like price decreases, but you have to keep in mind that if the company is giving you enough dividends that the total return of that particular company is positive, then it's really not a bad sign at all. For example, I was able to buy most of these companies during the COVID times. So that means the prices were very, very low. Like right now you see the price of Main Street Capital at 35. I think I bought it at 27, 25 even. So that's very nice. And that's why if you take a look at the Excel sheet right now, on Main Street Capital, the five year price return is 32%. That means like it has increased over the five years, just the price by 32%. And the total returns means the coupons, dividends, and the price increase all combined. That has given you a rate of interest of 79%. Now, if you compare it with just investing in a broad index fund, you can see up top that that would have given you 120% over the last five years. Now, let's take a look at the last one year. In the last one year, it has outperformed the S&P 500 with 41% of total return, whereas S&P 500 just had 35%. And the price return is 33% on S&P 500 and Main Street Capital had 32%. So these are like very nice and interesting ratios you have to keep in mind the dividend yield that means like if you're putting 100 euros inside how much money will you get out that is like 5.97 percent that means in that case you would have gotten if you were putting inside 100 euros you will get 5.97 euros in dividends this is also another interesting criteria that you have to keep in mind when you're choosing different kind of dividend companies then there are multiple other things like payout ratios to see that if the company the dividends that they're paying out if they are sustainable at all or not now main street capital had been increasing its dividends from quite a few years so that's why you see the payout ratio is actually more than 100 what more than 100 means is essentially the company is paying out more dividends to the shareholders than the money that they're earning now this could happen because of two reasons maybe there are some kind of like you know revenue decreases in the short term and maybe they're planning that it is going to increase afterwards so in that kind of scenario they keep it constant otherwise there would be some kind of dividend cuts and whenever dividend cuts happen then of course the stock price also falls down that's why they generally do not want a dividend cut what they try to do is finding other opportunities where they can make more money and they can keep the dividend stable at least so that's a very interesting thing so far like they have been doing pretty well now if you take a look i've been receiving dividends from them from quite a while so you see like you know 17th june i received 42 euros and 37 cents 16th july i received 42 euros and 82 cents another thing that you see is that the dividends have generally been increasing so like that you can see from the june and the july one so in june it was 37 cents and in july it was 82 cents so like almost like one week's grocery or something you're just getting it out as dividends which is like very nice so that was the first company the second company is sl green realty again i bought it at a very cheap price because if you take a look at longer performance of this over five years it was declining in price because there were a lot of issues going on with the company but I was able to buy it at a very cheap price and then it gave us very nice return. So to show you on the Excel sheet again, 
the one year return of SLG is 50.75% compared to the S&P of 33.32%. And also the total return is 60% compared to 35.4% of S&P 500. That's why it's important to see what kind of companies you're investing in at what kind of time. I think the crash that happened in 2020, that was like one of the greatest opportunities for people to start investing. And I was able to like buy this at a very fair price at that time. Now, if you look at my phone, it's right now at around like 64 euros and 25 cents. And uh, because I did my depot change, the actual price is just showing as like 536 euros plus. And it is showing that I bought it at 62 euros, but Previously, I bought this stock at just like, you know, 52 euros or something, 52, 55. And then whenever you do a depot, you batrag or like you change your depot. I was like previously at Trade Republic, then I shifted to Scalable Capital because it gives you the flexibility of moving around. There are way lesser costs in transactions on Scalable Capital compared to Trade Republic. So all in all, it was a good uh, decision. But like during that, these uh, buy prices changed. So that's why you see this. But otherwise, like I'm pretty happy with the company. It has also been paying me dividends like since quite a while now. So if I show you all the transactions, for example, it's like what 56 euros, 22, 55 euros, 11, 56 euros, 46, 57 euros, 6. So there has been some kind of fluctuation. These also happen because of the exchange rates, because the dividends are paid out in US dollars. And when you receive in your, you know, Eurozone, you're getting it converted to euros. But otherwise, like it's been increasing so far. So I'm pretty happy. And combined, if you see 57 euros six, I will take you to the all transactions part. So here, if you see 57 euros six and 42 euros 82, essentially make up 99 euros and 88 cents. Now, if I take you to the Excel sheet on SLG, you also see that the dividend yield is not so high. It's 4.66%, but the payout ratio is also decent. It's 55%. And this company has been standing since 1997. This means it has gone through multiple different kinds of phases and has a pretty strong management. So hopefully like they keep on continuing this in the future too. Other companies are generally like, you know, relatively young. Another thing that you have to keep in mind when you're investing in dividend companies is taking a look at their revenues. If their revenues have been increasing, the profits have been increasing over the last few years, then of course it makes sense to invest in those companies. But you have to keep in mind that don't just focus on like one individual advice. Make your own research, see what kind of situation you are in right now. If dividend companies would be better for you or growth companies. Right now, because the stock market has gotten more or less stagnant, what I'm doing is I'm investing more in the cash flow companies or dividend companies so that whatever money I'm putting inside, I'm at least getting something out of it. Because for example, if you take a look at Tesla. Now Tesla, I had invested in it since quite a while now, but like after the inclusion in S&P 500, so the price was already a bit higher. But if you take a look at the six month scenario, it is like essentially like doing not so great. It's like minus 20%, but over the last one year, it's like 100% up. Now, because right now the things are more or less stagnant for the growth companies, like especially in the tech sector, what I'm doing is I'm putting my money inside somewhere else so that the opportunity cost that I have, that means the money I could have earned by investing X amount of money somewhere else, that is less. So I'm just doing it in the dividend companies right now. If you really want some very safe companies, I think like Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, like these companies which have been there for a very long time and have been increasing their dividends consistently, they're also a nice way to start investing. Now, if you can't buy an entire stock, what you can do is you can set up savings plan. For example, on Tesla, for example, you can set up a savings plan of 25 euros per month because if you buy it, it is going to be 553 euros. But if you want to like invest smaller amounts, then you get fractional shares out of it. That is also very nice and something that you should be aware of. Now, the other five companies which pay you dividends monthly that I was talking about in the starting of the video are um, AGNC, Good, Stag, Glad, Gain. So these are the ticker symbols, but the name of the companies are AGNC Investment Corporation. Then afterwards you have Gladstone Commercial Corporation, Stag Industrial Inc., Gladstone Capital Corporation, Gladstone Investment Corporation. And they are generally like REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust, or they are BDCs, Business Development Companies. These are essentially the companies which pay you a lot of like dividends generally. So that's the main thing. We'll be talking about these companies in a lot more detail in the blog post that we have linked in the description below. It's on the website financegermany.com, which is a new website that we have launched, which is going to help expats with everything related to their personal finances, loans, credit cards, banks, and so on. 
So take a look at that and also take a look at the playlist if you have missed out the first four videos of this series. With this, I conclude the personal finance for expat series in Germany. If you have any kind of questions whatsoever, you can write it down in the comment section below. And also, if you haven't yet opened your depot with Scalable Capital, use our affiliate link in the description below so that you can support our work without any kind of additional cost to you. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.